Well, hello, friends. I hope you're having a great day today. You know, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all of his benefits. I wonder today, have you stopped and thought about all the benefits you have for serving God? I'm telling you, you have more blessings than you do problems today because that's the God that we serve. So when you begin to feel a little down and out and feel like the weight of the world is just pressing you in, just stop and begin to count the benefits and the blessings of God and I guarantee you, you'll find something to rejoice about. Well, welcome to Tuesday's edition of Take 5. It is December the 20th. That means it is five little simple days until Christmas. I can't believe how quick this time has come. Now, hey, now don't forget, this Sunday, Christmas Day, we will be having worship service from 10 to 11. Would sure love to see you in the house of the Lord, worshiping our Savior there on that day. Now, we are dealing with the subject that we have simply entitled Living by Faith as we are trying to glean a, a better understanding or at least a working and biblical understanding uh, of uh, Hebrews chapter 11 because I believe Hebrews chapter 11 gives us the best definitions and scenarios of faith that there could be. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. So when it says faith is, I want to pay attention to that because that's letting me know it's about to tell me what faith is. And that's what we're after. We're after knowing what it is. So it says it is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. So that's what I want to deal with is understanding what is substance, what hope really is, and what is evidence. And I believe we can do that, and this will give us a clearer picture of what this uh, uh, mysterious subject of faith actually is. So look at the word substance real quick. It comes from the Greek word hypostasis. Uh, that's probably not important to you with the exception of we still use that word in the English language today. We call it hypostasis instead of hypostasis, and it's a medical term, but it also refers to substructure. And that's what faith was. When the Greeks translated this, that's what it was. It was the substructure and the foundation that proves an actual structure will exist. That means it's coming, and it supports the actual structure when it is formed. Now, if you think about that, when the foundation is dug and poured for anything, that means something's coming. It's not here yet, but it means something's coming. And the foundation will be the most vital part because that's what this thing that's coming, that's what it's going to sit on. That's what's going to hold it up. That's what's going to support it. So faith being the substance, that means it is the foundation. It is, it is the, the proof that something is coming. Something's about to happen. Now, the thing is, we don't know when it's going to happen, but it will not happen if the foundation's not there. If the structure is not there, the substructure rather, if that is not there, it's not going to happen. So faith is the substance. It's the foundation for the things that we hope for. Now, the word hope there, we, we water it down when we use it in our daily language. And we'll say things like this. Well, I, I'm going fishing tomorrow. I hope it doesn't rain. Well, you know, you and I understand that. <clears throat> But to get the proper usage of the word and not water it down, we need to see what the Bible says about it because that's, that's what's important is what God meant when he said it and not how we use language today. So the word hope means to expect with confidence. That hope is, is what I'm expecting faith to bring to pass in my life. Even though I don't see how it can, I expect that it's going to happen and I'm looking for it to happen at any given moment. That's what hope is. So faith is the substructure, the foundation of the things that I expect will exist and it is the evidence of things unseen. Evidence, when, is, when it is defined, is the proof and the conviction of an absolute truth. 
but it is proof first of all inwardly to yourself and then it is proof outwardly to the world. Now that may not make sense, but let me see if I can explain it a little better way. <clears throat> Faith should be first and foremost the only proof that you and I ever need to trust the promises of God. We shouldn't need a sign. We shouldn't need someone to confirm it. We shouldn't need, a, you know, a thunderclap from heaven. Faith should be the proof. It's the substructure of what we're hoping for. Faith also should be the proof that it is going to happen. We, we don't need a sign. Thomas needed a sign. He said, unless I put my finger in the nail print in his hand and put my hand in his side, I, I will not believe. We, we don't need that kind of faith. We need faith that knows that this is all the proof I've got to have. God's going to do it. Secondly, it's proof outwardly because the way I live my faith and obey my faith is proof to the world that it's real. I believe our, my good friend Noah can help us out here. When you look at his life, the, the, the faith that he had was the only proof that he had that it was going to rain. He didn't have a weather report from John Nodar or anything else like that. The only proof that he had that it was going to rain was his faith. And his obedience to that faith in building the ark was proof to the world that it was truly going to rain. So if you take them definitions and we run them all together, then here's what verse 1 sounds like. Now faith is the foundation that supports everything we're expecting God to do. And it is the only proof needed that what we do not see yet, we will have. I think a better uh, and even easier way to say it is the way the Amplified Bible says it. He says, faith is the assurance or the title deed of things that we hope for being proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, the title deed. Everybody knows that if you have the title, you own it. You may not have taken possession of it yet, but you have the title deed and you own it. There used to be an old song that they sang in the church years ago. It said, I hold a clear title to a mansion that Jesus has gone to prepare. We've not seen that mansion. We've not laid eyes on it. We don't know on what side of heaven that he's built it in, the north, south, east, or west. Is it in the suburbs? Where, where is it at? We don't know where he's built it. We just know that we own it because we've got that title deed that is our faith in Jesus Christ. And because we have that title deed, we know that we surely own that place even though we have not taken possession of it yet. That's the way faith is in every part of our life. It's the title deed to the things that we're believing for. It means we own them. We just haven't taken possession of them yet, but they are coming because faith is the foundation that says something's on the way. Well, hey, I got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Wednesday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day. Remember, friend, trust the Lord. He will never fail you.